Scotty, I'm looking at some heartbreaking photos in now from Horry County, South Carolina Fire Rescue made their way over to Ocean Island Beach, North Carolina to assist. But with what we can only imagine is a difficult and extensive fire. You can see not only the flames shooting out of what appears to be some sort of residence, but take a look at the bottom of the screen as well, too. They are having to fight this fire while wading through whatever the storm surge is there, because this is exactly where the hurricane came ashore earlier tonight. This is extensive damage. These are some of the first close-up shots that we are seeing in this early morning hour of this fire on Ocean Island Beach in North Carolina. We had seen already some of the shots from afar that showed the glowing fire off in the distance, leaving only the imagination to paint the picture. And now we're getting some of these first ground shots and I think what my imagination had feared seems to be the reality for so many folks tonight on Ocean Island Beach, North Carolina. So our hearts and prayers go out to everyone uh, who resided in this community, but also, again, coming off our last note, Scotty, hats off endlessly to the fire crews who are out there right now battling this extensive fire in the middle of hurricane damage, in the middle of a health pandemic. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, it's it's dangerous coronavirus wise. It's dangerous to be fighting a fire with 60 mile per hour winds going on. You don't know uh, when the next tree could come down or the next power pole or power line. So, you know, just um, that that the first responders, you know, that that is what their call of duty is, is to go out to protect and preserve. And that's what they're doing. They're trying to preserve and protect people's home as much as they can and make sure that the folks who may be affected by this are are safe. So. Horry County themselves earlier this evening retweeted a post that we hadn't yet read, but stuck with me. And I'm going to read it now, and then I'll explain why this is really coming to mind. We urge you to take precautions immediately if water enters your home. If you can safely do so without standing in water, turn off the main electrical breaker in the panel box to avoid a potential fire. That's not to say that that's what happened here. But what stood out to me in this tweet was, obviously, do not touch your electric breaker if you're standing in water, because water conducts electricity, and they were afraid that people might get electrocuted in their homes. These firefighters are now battling what is clearly a multi-alarm fire while standing in floodwaters. And this is a situation where it is more than likely there are down power lines, down utility lines, and that's what makes this all the more complicated. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's definitely a, a sad situation, and you know, like you said, our, our hearts and, and thoughts and prayers with those folks, and you know, hopefully everyone was able to get out safely, and and, and there's not more to this. Um, uh, like you said, um, we'll see the, the widespread devastation that this fire has probably caught. And if you've ever vacationed on the Carolina coastline, you know it's a popular destination. Any beach town really is. But uh, these homes are, are packed almost on top of each other. And so if one house catches fire and you got 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, it doesn't take much for that wind to carry embers to the next house and then the next house and then the next house. And before you know it, three, four, five homes are, are on fire. And it's so overwhelming that um, most of these fire departments, James, these are smaller cities. You know, yeah, we have a lot of people in the summertime, but during regular times, you know, these are small populated towns and, and most of these fire departments are probably volunteer based. And, and so uh, they don't have all the equipment that the bigger cities would have. And they don't have all the manpower, you know, um, Ocean Isle to Myrtle Beach uh, or Horry County, you know, that's a good 30, 45 minute drive there. So, you know, I was just reading between the lines on manpower and I'm only speculating, but Horry County, a place that was real close to the eye of this storm just offshore, which we saw earlier had storm surge problems. If they have crews available to go help their neighbors, then I can only take some hope in thinking that things in Horry County tonight are not that bad. 
because right. they're able to step up and move from their community to another community in need. Yes, yeah, that, that's, that's a good observation. And, and I hope, you know, we haven't really heard a lot of wind reports. We have heard storm surge flooding. Uh, so hopefully uh, it's not been too bad down, down that way. Uh, but, you know, that, that southeast coast the, of North Carolina really got the brunt of this. That's where landfall obviously was. So, um, you know, it all began with that tornado that occurred in Baldhead Island. Uh, we have got confirmation there is damage on the island. Chris Jackson uh, earlier, you know, reporting that he had heard several homes and structures were, were affected by that. That's kind of kick-started everything around, I think it was around 745 this afternoon. And uh, since then, it's, it's just been, everything's been going crazy. So, um, well, speaking of, there's a new tornado warning. <laughs> yes. We're going to go ahead and pivot right on over now to a new tornado warning in eastern North Carolina. This is